Hello, and welcome back to episode 197B of Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes after a snipe that was mm, not that successful, but still we had a restart and I would have rather had it all together on one video so it would be easier for viewers. But that's the way the cookie crumbles or maybe, yeah, cookies are flat. Uh, I'm Patricia Steer, Mark Sargent is here. And uh, the first person that we're going to be talking to, uh, aside from in the previous part, we had Anthony Riley showing that the domain was not owned by Mark Sargent. And what we're talking about is, um, I don't know what to call this, domain gates or app gates. Maybe there'll be a name for this as time progresses in Flat Earth. But we have uh, the owner, of Metatron and iMobilize, that's a company associated with them. And his name is Ralph Joseph Rio. And he is not appearing on camera and he'll tell us why. But please, before you say, oh, not on camera, he's not real, it's fake, he's an actor. There are some channels, including MGTV, who don't show their face, don't have their voice. We can't check into their background. We have no idea who they are. And there's some flat earth channels that are wonderful people, but they never show their face. So please try to keep that in mind. I'm doing the best I can. Joe, thank you for being here. I really appreciate you taking the time to come on and discuss this issue. I'm sure that you were just uh, minding your own business when I emailed you and said, hey, would you be willing to, to come on and talk? Um, could, you, could you just tell us uh, a little bit about yourself how you got involved with uh, the company Metatron and what your role is in that company. Sure, thanks for inviting me on your show. Hi, Mark. Basically, I approached Mark a few years ago because I noticed uh, Flat Earth was trending highly in YouTube and we were testing a new business model. Oh, by the way, I'm, I'm the CEO of Metatron Incorporated. Our app division is called iMobilize. And uh, we've been around for no about nine years. Anyway, <clears throat> we wanted to test uh, a business model where we would convert free subscribers, YouTube subscribers, to paid subscribers. Uh, we didn't see this demonetization avalanche coming. And, uh, but we felt that a lot of these channels could be making a lot more money. For example, you know, I'm a personal fan of Mark's show. I thought it was entertaining. I'm not, I'm flat earth agnostic, but uh, it was a very entertaining show, kind of like a coast to coast. I like conspiracies and uh, I never thought I'd be part of one, but hey, that's fine. And uh, Mark um, is also a kind of a historian and he, he has opinions on all kinds of things besides flat earth. So I said, well, why don't we uh, make a website for your diehard fans? to listen to some of your other ideas, like on JFK or um, World War II. And, um, you know, it's, it, did, it did okay, but um, we also tested out with some fitness channels and yoga, and that's what we're primarily into. We do, uh, our biggest app was uh, Eckhart Tolle, The Power of Now. You know, we sold 20 million books. That was probably our most famous app that we did. And, uh, you know, Mark uh, and I are similar ages. We have similar backgrounds, but uh, we are not the same person, I must say. Maybe brothers from different mothers, but we are not the same person. So I will just uh, let everyone know that. Any more questions? Or Yeah, I think I've got a ton of different questions. Um, and a lot of people have um, come to me with questions, and some of them I couldn't quite explain, and then some of them I figured out on my own. I was able to debunk the MGTV video within maybe 40 seconds while sitting in my car on my cell phone. Number one, because I know I'm innocent of everything that I'm charged of, so right away I don't have an issue with it. But um, I was trying to look at it from the perspective of somebody from the outside. One of the accusations, obviously we've determined that uh, Ralph Joseph Real is you, and it's not Mark. Mark is not Ralph, Mark is not Joe, and Mark is not Joseph. It's all one person. But there's another person that you're partnered with. Can you tell us about that person? Okay. Ralph is my father's name. Joseph is my grandfather's name. Uh, I think Mark remembers this. At that time, having the name Ralph was not cool in school. 
you know, it basically meant barfing. <laughs> so I decided to go by Joe and, um, I don't know. It, it just stuck with me. And as far as uh, Dennis, Dennis is my business partner. He uh, is an accomplished bass player, uh, website designer. He's from New York City. He's a long haired guy. He plays in a lot of local San Diego bands, reggae bands. We actually played in some bands together. Um, he's just a great guy. He doesn't know anything about this stuff at all. He just doesn't even pay attention to uh, YouTube at all. He just likes to play his music and uh, tour around town and chill at his house. And uh, he's really good at accounting and paperwork and all the stuff I don't like to do. So that's basically it. He's a long term business partner and friend. And uh, that's, that's the story of Dennis Sluka. Dennis Sluka. Okay, so we've determined that part. Now, you're a musician too. Some people have been trying to find out who you are and have found a couple of different musicians. Which is the one that is you? Okay, so there's three Joe. I was in a band called Emote. That was probably my most famous band. And we played with Blink-182 and STP and Third Eye Blind, but we never made it big. And... Um, <clears throat> I decided to go solo like most singers do in bands and I decided to use my name Joe Real but no one could really spell it so I used R E A L it was kind of like a stage name uh like Sting, Gordon Sumner, etc. And uh there it turns out there's three Joe Reels on iTunes right now. I was the first. There's one guy that's a rapper. I don't know who he is. And now there's a new guy who's really good. I wish it was my music. It's uh, kind of jazzy, tropical, bossa nova type of stuff. He has, probably has 12 or 13 tracks on there. Right now I have about three songs, and I am coming out with a new album. Uh, it's going to be uh, totally different than what I used to do. But um, that's the story. Uh, I haven't trademarked my name yet. I probably should get on that. And um, I consider myself the real Joe Real. <laughs> Keeping it <laughs> but have you bought your website yet? Have you bought your website domain yet? That's the real question. You know what? Let me double check that. I <laughs> need to. I think I bought Joe Real Inc. I, but maybe not Joe Real, but spelled my German R I E H L. Now, you've worked for, uh, involved with um, Hollywood and, and movie making, and those, you, uh -huh. you live in California, and a lot of people who are involved in conspiracy see that as a red flag. Tell us about your background when it comes to those things and what your role is. Sure. So I was born in New Jersey, Hackensack, moved to Tennessee, lived in Oak Ridge uh, until about junior high school. Then I came out to San Diego. Parents got divorced. Went with my mom to San Diego. She got a job with, I believe, Motorola at the time. And um, loved the California lifestyle. Kind of transitioned from nerd computer guy to musician, singer, surfer dude. And I'm kind of a blend of both. I just love San Diego. The weather, the people. It's great. It's like being on vacation all the time. And um, went to UCSD, computer engineering degree, but on, in my senior year, I got a job offer from a company called Electric Pencil. I was their third employee, and it was just starting up. It was located in about Melrose and Fairfax, and I believe there's a Supra shoe building there now. But at the time, we, we operated what's called a service bureau. It's a... Um, there was a transition in the printing industry between analog film. We had big sheets of film with, on these linotype machines. I know no one knows what I'm talking about, but trust me, it was a, it was a real pain. And then all the digital started coming online, like PageMaker 1.0, Quark 1.0, Photoshop 1.0. I just happened to know those programs, and I'm a big Apple and PC. I, you know, I like computers in general, but I'm more of an Apple guy. And it was an Apple shop. And he said, hey, do you know how to do these programs? We don't, we don't, we need someone. I'm saying, yeah. So I moved to LA. And I think within a year or two, we had three locations and 60 people. And what, what happened was, is my boss was just a go-getter. He just kept going to the studios, record studios, movie studios. Let us do something. Let's do a CD cover. Let's do a movie poster. There was a couple big guys in town, but eventually 
one of the studios gave us a shot. I forgot which one. It might have been Disney, actually. And after you get one, it was like a domino effect. We had more work than we knew what to do with. So I got to work on a lot of interesting projects. Um, I, was in there, I was there for about three years. <laughs> then we had the Northridge quake, and my commute really increased. And then, uh, I don't know, it's just kind of over LA's traffic. And uh, I mean, it, it's a fun town, but I was working too much and also playing too hard. So I decided to come back to San Diego. I quit my job, started a website design company. And um, the rest is history. We transitioned into apps, and um, we've created about 2,000 apps and probably a couple hundred websites. So are you an app company primarily or a website company or both? Uh, kind of both, but most of our revenue is from apps. We do, we do different types of consulting. You know, we uh, run social media campaigns, advertising campaigns like Facebook ads and Google ads for different companies. Um, Dennis has a wide range of skills in that area. I do too, kind of them that we overlap. Then we hire subcontractors. We did have a, a few full-time employees in LA. Um, one of them passed away. And what we tended to do is when we get big projects, we would just hire more people for the project and then slim down after that. And um, yeah, but apps are our primary focus. It's, I think, uh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I think people had in mind when they heard about this on the MG, MGTV channel, and then when ODD mirrored it and many other people, that you were some sort of big wig, roller, high roller, um, producing uh, movies or involved in Hollywood, oh, back okay. alley deals, maybe even looked like a Rothschild or something. <laughs> Well, you know, I did produce a, a pilot for a TV show on the Sci-Fi Channel, and it was called The Chronicles, and it was, gosh, it was a while ago. We um, shut down USD, University of San Diego, and uh, rented it out for a week, and it's a big, I mean, after producing one pilot, I did not want to be in the movie business. It's just a long story. It, it, it's, a, it's a tough business. I thought the music business was tough. At one time, I owned a, rec a small recording studio. We recorded my band and some other bands. And, um, but it's kind of like, I w I've sold songs to publishing companies, but it's kind of like selling your own babies. So I was like, I kind of want to make money outside of like my passion. You know, so people say, do what you love. But sometimes when you do what you love and then you sell it, it's, I don't know, it takes the fun out of it. So, um, I really like, you know, I, I really like Descartes Tolle. I thought he was uh, just an awesome, positive self-help guy. And, um, you know, that was kind of our big break in the app world. And it's when we got uh, him as our client, then, you know, he was a, such a big, big, uh, big wig out there in that field. We got a bunch of yoga people, the fitness people. Then we did some Netflix type of things, TV shows. We have, we did have some UFO documentaries and, um, I personally like all that kind of stuff. And that's how you ended up doing the Google search for what's trending. And then when you heard flat earth, that piqued your curiosity. That's what I'm thinking happened. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because flat earth kind of came out of nowhere and I did watch the flat earth clues and I thought, wow, that's some good production value. I, I really appreciated that. And, uh, I was like, you know what, this Mark Sargent guy, he's, he's got charisma. I think he got to be a star someday. No. I thought, you know, this would be a good channel to test our model with because, uh, you know, at the time, I think he had, I don't know, 15K subscribers. So if it was a big flop, you know, it's kind of like a proof of concept. And, um, and then we tried it with a few other channels. But, um, you know, I think, you know, I think Mark and both of you are going to go on to bigger, bigger things, too. And... Uh, yeah, I got a I got a hold of Mark because I saw it trending and it wasn't saturated with with apps. There were no flat earth apps. There might have been one. But uh, we thought, you know, let's try an app, let's try a website. This is niche. Conspir and conspiracies in general were on the rise. And I thought, let's try a little niche and see how it goes. So, and um, that's basically it. Okay, so in order to do that. Um, you needed a website. So we already had in the first show, 197A, that got sniped. 
the discussion with Anthony Riley as to how that website was not owned by Mark Sargent, which is MarkSargent.com. I remember when I met Mark, I was asking him, hey, why don't you use MarkSargent.com as your website for, you know, in, instead of StrangeWorld.com? And he told me that, uh, well, he couldn't get it. Somebody else had it, and Strange World's good because Strange is an anagram for Sargent, and et cetera, et cetera, uh -huh. et cetera. Uh -huh. So how did you and when did you come into possession of MarkSargent.com? That's a big question. Well, I kind of believed in Mark as, as a personality. And um, I thought he, I think I still think he might do his own talk show, maybe a late night talk show, who knows? Or like a, you know, a Joe Rogan general podcast about a bunch of things. But anyway, we registered the Mark Sargent show. I wanted to put his name in there. I, I think it's always good to invest in yourself. Like if you're going to name something, you know, put your name in there. You might as well. I thought his name was pretty cool sounding. Mark Sargent, you know, leader, leader of a movement. Um, but then we looked into MarkSargent.com and it was owned by a company called Huge Domains, I believe, dot com. And they, they own thousands of domains and they, you know, they, want you to bid on a Maroc. I don't know what it was, but I think it, I forgot the final price, but I think it was $800. I could be wrong on that, but it was close to that. And I thought that's eh, a good enough domain because a lot of these two word domains are, are gone. At one time I owned a domain called Dio.com. Kind of wish I would have kept that. Oh, well, like up, the singer Dio, got it. No, no, Dio, like D-I-O-D-E. Oh, Diode. Uh, yeah, I was, uh, I had an electronic band and we were going under the name Diode at the time. But um, it was sold to some German electronics company. I think I sold it for 15K, you know, at the time. It was a good little chunk of change. Um, but had I known, I would have registered a lot more of these names. Um, I went to UCSD and, you know, the internet was popping at the time. And it looked like it was catching on, but I had no idea it was going to catch on like it did. So... So that's the story about Mark, MarkSargent.com. Um, what was the year, if you can remember, when you purchased MarkSargent.com from BigDomains.com? And why the heck would they even have something called MarkSargent.com? Just because... That's a, that's a, that's a good question. Um, you know, Mark Sargent, I, I, I know he was in the video games. He was like a professional video game player. Uh, maybe they saw him doing that and they said, oh, let's just register this guy's name. They, they, you know, like I was trying to give you an example, like some people, well, some companies register every combination of every name. Like, for example, our company is named iMobilize. There's a company still trying to sell me Mobilize It. You know what I mean? Like, why someone bought Mart Sargent probably got it for whatever the registration registration cost was maybe huge domains was a registrar and so they got it for free that can happen also and so they just sucked up as many as many as they can um or maybe uh, you know i traveled back in time and bought it because i knew mark would be huge just <laughs> kidding that is a joke okay so um i uh i don't know who owned mark Sargent before i wish i could you know, get the history of the internet and maybe the Wayback Machine, like uh, Andrew was talking about, will show the, the original owners. But uh, I like, like with the apps, the apps say they're from 2010, you know, and um, there's some right. questions and about that, right? There is, so, and I want to get to the apps. It's a very big thing. Now, um, before we get to the dates of the creation of the apps, for those who don't know, I have an app, and Mark Sargent has an app. And it mines flat earth and other hot potatoes. And Mark's got two, actually, that's through the iMobilize and uh, mm -hmm. Joe Real uh, company thing. Um, and uh, he's got a survival guide and a Mark Sargent app. So there's actually three apps. And tell us uh, when those apps were created for both of us. And and did we ask for them? And uh, okay, did we sure, sure. for them and all of that? You, I think you guys, well... If you count the Google apps, you could maybe you have six apps. You this got, is true. Got, There's a Google and an Apple, but we'll, yeah. we'll just call it one. Right, right. So um, I approached Mark first, and I heard about you when you guys would do your shows together. And I, you know, I thought, you know, Patricia needs an app too. You know, why not? Um, you guys, you know, you get significant downloads daily. There are no ads on the app. We've experimented with, I think I 
made marks at 99 cents for a day or two kind of killed the downloads and i don't mind uh i don't mind the uh gathering uh, you know we, we do keep you know we're gathering data that's that's true we had uh one of the first uh cannabis related apps ever allowed on itunes and it's pretty valuable because it you know everyone that downloads it we have we don't we have information about them we don't have their street or address but we could send them a push notification apple actually controls all the heart all the real information all the billing goes through apple or google um but we can contact say you guys have a seminar in la and you say hey joe can you push notify all my you all my down the all my app people about our 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 seminar in uh vegas or wherever i shouldn't have said vegas oh great anyway <laughs> wherever it is and uh we'll just set up push notifications and it might help you guys uh boost your attendance Okay. But no, you, yeah, I came to you to do it for you. you. You didn't come to us. Same with Mark. Right. All right. Um, I know I'm asking questions I know the answer to already, but I want everybody else to know because this is, is, this is a serious thing. Um, the apps in general, many people are worried about the fact that there are permissions on the apps that allow the phone to never sleep and they, they, the camera is on and therefore I mobilize and Metatron is spying on you. How do these apps differ from the regular apps people download to their phone, like Facebook and Twitter and I don't know, um, uh, anything else? Well, okay, let me try to give you some context here. For example, Uber got in trouble recently because they were tracking people after they got out of their car, which is, was against Apple policy. Um, Facebook, Facebook Messenger, um, basically in their terms of service, once you download their app, they can record you 24 seven and they own whatever they get. Um, we use a platform, a cloud-based platform to basically save costs because to program and update hundreds of apps in the native format, native code is gargantuan task. And Apple keeps changing the iOS, so we have to update the apps. We're narrowing our portfolio down. In the beginning, we wanted like as many apps as we could because we're all making money. Now we're, we're starting to uh, shrink our portfolio. We'll probably end up having 100 apps, something more manageable. Plus, Apple is phasing out using any type of template or, or um, cloud-based platform app-making system. So we do, ha we do have some native, meaning uh, they were hand-coded by a programmer, versus template apps, which are kind of like WordPress yeah, you use WordPress to create a website. There are services out there that you can use to create apps. So we used one of those services. And their default setting is uh, ask for permissions for, for all this stuff. Now, can you go in there and turn that off? I think the user obviously can turn it off. Um, we could probably on our next update turn that off for the your guys's apps if we if you guys want us to yes but but honestly uh it's kind of uh i don't know this is really we have nobody has time or cares about you know tracking all the flat earthers through our apps i mean we no no government agency has said hey we need a list of all the flat earthers um we don't use any is use it for anything except like maybe a promotional tool at some time in the future. Maybe I've sent an, Hey, check out from Mark's main flat earth app to his survival app. I, mean, I probably have sent a push notification said, Hey, if you like Mark's flat earth stuff, check out his, either his website or check out um, his survival guide, which was pretty good. And he was giving it away for free. I, I don't think we're, I think we're charging for it, but it's, you know, people don't like to pay for a lot of stuff. And then um, Patricia, I think I've sent a, a notification from Mark's app to say, hey, download Patricia's app and maybe vice versa. So that's what we use those types of permissions for. Um, that we don't geolocate anyone. We, you know, we just don't, we're just not in that business. We're not in a data selling business. There are companies that are, but we're not one of them. All right. 
The next question is about the date of the apps being constructed. Now, I know that you approached Mark and then approached me about doing the apps, and that was in 2016. And of course, I said, is it going to cost me anything? You said, no. Am I going to have to do anything? You said, well, you're going to have to send me some artwork. And I said, okay, and what else? Mm, promote it on your channel? And I said, okay, is it going to cost the people who downloaded anything? And you said, no. And I said, sure, I'll do it because not that I think I'm so special that I have to have an app, but because you volunteered, I saw it as a gift and I thought, we have apps for everything. Why not apps for Flat Earth? Uh, we are, even if that's part of the Beast Matrix system, as people say, we are using YouTube, which also is. We're using Facebook, we're using Twitter. So if we're going to use their system against them, we might as well do things like this to normalize the idea of Flat Earth. Having an app, why not? So. How did these apps, as people have found out, and I never knew, get to be created on different dates within the same time frame of the year 2010? Obviously, the Mandela effect. I mean, come <laughs> on. Just kidding. Anyway, no. So, um, okay. When I, I'm, I'm coming from a business standpoint. When I approach a publisher, say they own a catalog of videos and they sell DVDs online. And they're like, well, why, why would we want an app? And I said, well, it's just another distribution channel. Well, we already have our website and we sell our DVDs. And I'm like, well, you know, if you'd make an app, you'd actually make extra money and it's a whole different market. And some, some clients listen to me, like for example, Eckhart, Eckhart's manager at the time, he's like, well, we've sold, you know, millions of books on Oprah. We have a subscription-based website that's doing really well. I don't know if Eckhart needs an app. And I said, well, maybe Eckhart wants to reach younger people. And, uh, you know, an app is something a younger person at the time tended to use. And it didn't co we didn't charge them any money. And we, we took a small percentage because he's such a huge guy. And, and we made a little money off of Eckhart Tolle's app. It was, it was a good run for us. He since then sold his content to some, a different company so we no longer work on his apps but um in your particular case you know there's the youtube people there's the app people there's the web people i mean sometimes the, the paths don't cross and someone will do a search on the app store for flat earth never go to youtube and do a search for flat earth or vice versa and uh, there you go there's a couple flat earth apps and um I think, you know, both of you get hundreds of down. Well, I'm not hundred. You get hundreds of downloads a month on your apps. Do you know so how many downloads I've had this month just off the top of your head? I think I sent you the graphic. Oh, this month? I think it's 180. Let me look okay. on it. Mean, All right. Fair enough. Not and Mark, Mark's is probably like 380 or something like that. Makes sense. Yeah. Suck it, Patricia. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so... Uh, that's that on the okay okay why oh, are the yeah. apps want to know the why apps? they're dated i mean this is a very okay. important question that caused a lot of concern thinking wow. that that agencies set mark and i up to do flat earth back in 2010 made us apps never published them hid them until 2016 and then put those apps on the scene okay well what happens is this you know in the beginning apple would give any developer as many slots on the itunes store as they wanted um, but to me, I knew that would end eventually, and it has ended. So it was kind of like a cyber real estate land grab. So I, we would put up a lot of apps. Most of them, 80% of them, didn't do that well. And so we had some old slots on the store. I don't know in particular what your apps used to be. They might have been yoga apps. They might have been meditation. They could have been some random documentary we also had a lot of ebook apps before apple came out with ibooks and they didn't want any more ebook apps so we had these slots with apps that were either turned off or weren't updated but they were already on the store and getting an update through apple is a lot easier than getting a brand new app so what we tend to do is we just update stale apps apps no one's using with a new app and then we keep our positions on the store so in 2010 we were putting up maybe 10 apps a day so that's probably why your apps track back that far that's, okay that's so 
playing devil's advocate, what would be the advantage if we were agents and an agency made apps in 2010 and then held them back and then released them in 2016? Um, it, would it be quicker to get the apps out there? I mean, how long does it take to make an app? You know, I don't see the advantage because if it was an agency, they would just tell Apple to put it out there whenever they wanted to put out the app. You know what I mean? They would just do it. They wouldn't have to jump through any hoops. Um, what was the second question? Well, I'm just wondering as to if we're going to pretend that we're agents here and that, that they, uh -huh. they did set these apps up. What, why would they set them up in 2010 and then wait all the way till, you know, when they decided to release Flat, Flat Earth uh, 2015? Um, wouldn't those apps just be outdated? They wouldn't have anything on them because my app, the only thing on my app is really my shows. Right, right. Um, so what, would there, what would be on those apps that were like, I almost feel like uh, this is what I'm thinking. You know, I haven't been kept keeping up with the flat earth community as much as I used to. I, uh, I've been busy and I almost feel like, like Mark's got the message out there. He's got the, you know, he's got the proof. He's got the science. He's interviewed enough people. Same with you. And uh, I almost feel like the flat earthers have too much time on their hands. They're overthinking things. Um, I don't, I, I we were not contacted by any governmental agency to create an app in 2010 and hold it to a certain time. Um, we don't have any government contracts, um, mostly because there's so much paperwork you have to, I've been contacted, but it's like, you know, it's like a, such a long process to get a government contract. Anyway, um, I can't see the advantage. I mean, I believe I'm kind of like an, uh, Ackman's razor, like the simplest explanation is usually most correct. You know, it's like, those are just defunct Apple slots, uh, app slots we had laying around. And I thought, eh, we'll just update those with your guys' apps. Yeah. So can I chime in here real quick? Go I have another it. question as well, but it pertains to, but will you go ahead, Mark? First? Uh, just real quick, because I mean, the chat room is, you know, say, wait, answer the question. Like, he just did. This is what I told you guys last night, which was, look, they're just old templates that you reuse for other things. You make a whole bunch of templates at once and some you turn into Uber, others you turn into cooking things and or a survival guide or whatever. That's the answer can to the I, question. That's why the 2010 I, dates I, are out there. Can I give a, a little bit different analogy that might sure. make more sense? Okay. We do use templates on a lot of our apps, mm -hmm. but you think of slots on the iTunes store is kind of like space on the grocery store shelf or on a monopoly board, you own properties. Now we put, we put some houses on one, we own the property, you know, and uh, we put some houses on there and we made a hotel as a successful app. We, uh, we got Baltic Avenue and uh, it, it went, it went under, you know, it just went bust. And so it just sat there dilapidating, but we still had the Baltic Avenue. And um, so we said, well, let's throw, you know, Mark's uh, hotel resort on Baltic Avenue and see what happens. So the value, there, there are templates. Uh, it, it, the value is the cyber real estate. A lot of people, it's a tough concept to get, but like iTunes doesn't want 17 million apps on the, or 100 million or whatever they got now. And at one time we had 2,000 active apps, which was in the top 1% of the 1% of all developers. And, uh, but... Now, when we wanted to get new apps, a lot of developers can't get new apps up there, but we could just update one of our old apps, put it, you know, just reframe the house, you know, tear down the existing house and put a better house on there. Right. And bam, you still have the property. So that's kind of the. That's, no, I, I, I like yeah, the monopoly. I like the monopoly yeah, board. Monopoly. Yeah. Yeah. Analogy. That's good. I like it. Sorry. Back to you, Patricia. Okay. So you mentioned earlier 2012. You said that that's when you bought from uh, bigdomains.com the, uh, uh, the marksargent.com. I don't think thing. it was as early as 2012, but oh, I I'm could sorry. be wrong. I could be wrong. Well, um, okay, no, know, wait. Why, did it still, why does it still say 2012 when you bought it? That's what I mean. Hey, Mark, was it 2012 when I approached you? If so, time has flied. No, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. 2012 no 2012 was when it dropped when it dropped off the face of the earth marksargent.com has died four times it wasn't interesting we didn't we didn't marksargent.com as it stands right now when you go in right now was built in 2016 okay good 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 um you know i don't have a great answer for that um 
domains do go into limbo. They go into parking mode. Um, you know, the whole ICANN organization is changing. You know, it's going from U.S. control to European control. And uh, all I know is uh, we bought the domain whenever, I think, 2015 or 16 from that company specifically to test this subscription idea we had, which was to convert YouTube free subscribers. And now, you know, now with the, the ads, you know, being all the videos getting demonetized, it might be a better business model now than it was then. So we're going to try it again, maybe, or try putting more resources towards it. Yeah. But uh, yeah. I, a lot I mean, of people are saying they're going to go off platform off of YouTube because they're, they're making YouTube a career. I'm not talking about people in Flat Earth as much as just people who do video games, people who do whatever. There's Twitch, there's this, there's that. But um, some people have found that the app said 2012. The HugeDomains.com purchased it in 2012 and you guys bought it in 2015. But why does the, why does the website still say 2012? Is it because they just changed the name of the owner? And they took over the remaining time. Would that be why? That's it's possible. Um, I think that you know you can go on forever with this minutia stuff. I mean, I think it's like I don't know exactly why MarkSargent.com went online, went offline, and blah 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 before we bought it. Um, maybe it was for sale, and the guy didn't want to put it for sale. You know what I mean? He might have just parked it somewhere. Maybe Mark knows better than I do what happens to those domains. Um, but, uh, you know, we became involved in 2016 or 15, late 15, to test the app. And, the, the, you know, we were driving traffic from the app to the website to see if we can get people to sign up. That was the gist of it. Okay. Uh, Mark, I've asked questions that have come to the top of my head in order to answer the concerns that were addressed by ODD and MGTV. And there are many others that I will soon be answering as our show progresses. But when it comes to Joe Real, Ralph Joseph Real in San Diego, uh, have we pretty much exhausted every single thing that he can tell us? I, I think so. And Is just there to anything prove it, in just, the just, live just chat to... that you are seeing that is a question that we've not yet addressed? I don't live want to chat. In fact, I'll 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 do this one real quick because yeah. I've got some people that are still saying, "Well, no, Mark Sargent actually has to be Joe Real." So I'll do it while Joe is on the line with me. I brought for special people who bugged me in chat. I brought, and we did this a while ago. This is not the first time I've dug out my driver's license. Okay, right, right. Just look. Okay, here's both my driver's licenses. Ungodly, horribly, terrible pictures. Here is, if you guys can see it here, there is my picture. A little picture. way, a little bit farther from this. There's screen. my picture. That's my expired, well, it's not even an expired driver's license. You know, in America, you can't own two driver's licenses. A little farther away, please. Simul blurry. Simultaneously. Is the camera not picking it up? That's one's from Colorado. That one's still legit, by the way. Don't, by the way, kids, don't throw away your driver's license just because they punched a hole in it. Make sure the date. You can use it as a second, for, uh, second part of ID. That's Colorado. This. Um, the next time, pull it a little bit farther away from the camera. It is a bit blurry. How much further you want to be able to hold it back? Uh, yeah, well, continue. Keep we don't. Going. We don't want to scare the children in the room, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. I, I don't <laughs> care if it's blurry. If you guys take a screenshot of this, it's fine. This is my Washington one. This one's good for another to like 2021 or something like that. That's me, Mark Kendall Sargent, born 1968, Seattle, Washington. You can look it up if you want. My name's not Joe. My name's not Dennis. My name's not anything. I've got appendix scars. <laughs> sorry, sorry to ruin your reputation. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I don't mind. It's like, look, you guys are making a friend. Just like, okay, if I'm Joe, then I literally spent my entire life because you're, you're, you're California all the way. Yeah, I'll tell you what. We'll do a show. We'll both be on there at the same time. Um, this one, this show here. I, you know, I just don't want people making crazy videos of my face doing all kinds of weird I stuff that, that they do to you guys. You know, I'm I'm a CEO of a publicly traded company. I got investors and things like that. So, I just wanted to. I like both of you guys. I like what you're doing. I say don't feed the trolls. I say don't waste a second on this bullshit and just focus in on your uh, the goal of the community, which is to you know spread or. Uh, help people understand that the world they're living in may not be as described in uh, the textbooks. Now, like I said, I'm not a flat earther. Do I, you know, I mean, every year NASA changes the shape of the earth. 
I mean, you know, and I, I, do, I, do, I know enough about computer graphics to know that no legitimate picture has been taken from space, but let's not get too crazy. I'm just saying that free speech and, uh, I, you know, the flat earth community, you, you know, the drama, you guys got to, you know, don't feed the trolls. That's what they want. You know, you, ask, you know, if they have some specific questions, are we the same person? No, we're not. Why the domain and the registers, two years, three years, blah, blah, blah. Who knows? I mean, we gave some answers. But, uh, you know, I think you guys should just, you know, focus. Like, what's the big topic other than this in Flat Earth right now? Many, many things. And okay. the upcoming conference. And that's what we're yeah, going to focus yeah. on. That's where Maybe, the conference... Hey, how about this, guys? Maybe I'll go to the... What is the LA one coming up? I'll just go to the LA one. Oh, an LA meetup? That would oh, be yeah. cool. <laughs> or the Seattle. It's not too far. If, I wouldn't mind if you guys did one in Vancouver. That's a nice area. <laughs> All, right. All right. Joe, All right. I appreciate you being here. <laughs> thank I you, Joe. you a friend. And hey, I, thank do, you guys. I do if you have a future opportunity to talk with me because you're involved in thinking about sure. lots of other things about yeah. the world and you know I, I used to have a top secret clearance but i can't keep secrets so they, they <laughs> yeah, took right. it away from me anyway uh, what i was going to say is, is um yeah i'll come back we'll talk more and um i appreciate the time and i wish you guys the best i'm big fans i'm thank big you. fan of both of you all right thank have you. a good thank day you guys so much, joe bye. totally appreciate it bye. ralph joseph real has left the building so we hope we've cleared up that and we do know that the the many many videos that have been mirrored from MGTV, et cetera, and all the other side videos that it's spawned, and the comments on Facebook and Twitter are going to have an impact. Many people won't see this video. Many people won't believe this video. Many people will just come and thumbs down this video because of its mere existence. Sure, that doesn't matter. But what does matter is that we have come forward and addressed this. Now, some will say, "Why didn't you address it the day the video came out?" Well, the day the video came out, I was so blindsided by it because I'm like, there's those innocent apps that don't even really get much traction, at least mine doesn't. Are you crazy? Uh, that it just, I, I just didn't think to, I don't answer to people who say things about me that aren't true. Anybody who knows me or has followed this channel will find no videos really on my channel where I am addressing any of the horrendous things that have been said about me that um, are completely incorrect. And uh, the reason I don't do that is don't feed the trolls. That's what the people want. They want to, uh, they want to, they want to throw you off your game. And that's everybody. Forget about me. I mean, uh, what I mean is they want to do that to all of us. All of us have been, uh, had these things happen to us before. And if you respond, it gives the trolls or, or people, we won't even call them trolls, people what they're looking for, which is attention. And it validates their claims in some ways because they'll say things like, oh, you're really talking about this a lot, must have hit a nerve. Now, if you don't address it, they'll say, oh, ignoring it, so it must be true. So that's what happens when you feed the trolls. So I've always gone through my YouTube experience since 2015 by not talking about what they say about me because in reality, it's it's not important. But I know a lot of people got up in arms because ODD pulled out of the conference and made that video. And uh, I, I felt that it was my duty because the conference is so important to Flat Earth. And uh, the, the, the convention that Gary John is putting on in the, uh, in the UK as well is one that's coming up in Europe. Uh, some people think that Flat Earth shouldn't be spread. We should keep it close to our hearts. I get it, I get it, I totally do. But I, I also think that my my view is important too, and other people's views that we do want to get it out to the public. And then we're going to, at some point, reach a, a larger percentage of people who know about this. And then what we're going to do, I don't know, but we have to take back what's been stolen from us, which is the truth about who we are. And there's a creator and we live on a flat plane and we've been lied to and our money's been stolen and our future of our children's been stolen. And so that's that's why we're doing what we're doing like meetups and conferences. Uh, I do want to share something with my screen here. I'm not very good at screen sharing. Uh, so let me give me a little bit of grace in order to get it right. Let me go here. I need a YouTube assistant. Um, hold on. That is my screen. Sorry, talking to myself. There we go. 
Um, I'm going to do a screen share here like a professional. Please look at the screen and read this. These are the kind of things that I receive from Mystic Warrior, Southern Hostility at Mail.com. Headline conference. Good evening, Patrick. See you at the conference when I sneak up behind you and plunge a 45 centimeter in your neck. It'll be your last day, I promise. You dumb traitor slut. I'll show you. Now, did yeah, I take that death, serious? Death threats are really smart. It's now, really what you want to do. how serious I take that. Delete. Trash. Delete. Close. Now I've got to figure out how to undo my screen share. Um, that took me a long time to screen share. Wish that was even more impactful, but it wasn't. But what I'm saying is, is that, is that what we want? A lot of people in Flat Earth have received similar comments. Is that the kind of people that we are? That's existing in low vibration. That's some would call a force from the dark side, or if you will, it's a satanic influence. And these influences, call them satanic, call them just darkness, get to all of us. But how we react to them when we have these thoughts to do something bad or say something bad, how we react to those things is what makes you somebody who's existing with God or goodness, whichever you prefer at heart. And this is a spiritual war that's going on. I don't mean this thing with Mark and I, I mean all of it, all the lies that we've been told and all the attacks. And I think as the conference approaches, it's heating up. Do I believe MGTV and ODD are Satanists or possessed by the devil? No, but there's, they've, they've, they're going the wrong way. I don't know who MGTV is. And unlike, uh, unlike Joe, who has a name and a voice, MGTV could be anybody. I know that they've put a lot of Alex Jones stuff on their channel and they were associated with Eddie Bravo and hosted the Eric Dubay, uh, um, talk with with Eddie Bravo and that might give you some indication of maybe who they are or who they're associated with or maybe it's just speculation just a, me being a conspirator as they say I don't know I only know that it's it's odd that MGTV comes out with that video right before the conference and ODD saw it and reacted now other people saw it and reacted and other people saw it and said Oof stupid i'm out of here but it seems like there is a witch hunt going on where people lose their minds um what's the name of the movie the monsters on Mar monsters on elm street monsters uh, on elm street originally a twilight zone from 1960 remade in the 1990s and for those who haven't seen it mark give us the, the recap of what that's about as i get another I, screenshot it, uh, it's screen mob, share set. it's mob mentality it was one of the most brilliant twilight zone episodes ever anywhere in fact you could look this up on i made a, a youtube video in january when we were going through this back then and i called it uh flat earth drama or you can just type in flat earth twilight zone and you'll see a picture of rod serling on there but the premise is is that all you have to do is go into a neighborhood kill the power and start a few cars here and there and make people stand out. One guy's car is working while the rest of the, the neighborhood isn't. They all of a sudden become suspicious of that guy. This house, their lights are on and nobody else's are. And everyone's like, why is that person special? What's going on with that person? And the suspicion just builds and builds until the mob mentality takes over and then they just tear at each other with pitchforks and torches. And that's how it ends. And the aliens that were sitting off at the edge of town and going we can do this all day long you know this this maple street they're no different from anybody else we'll just go one block to the other and that was the how the show ended and you know the sad part about that episode was it wasn't science fiction it's what what can be done right now turning the the greatest enemy of mankind is mankind itself we always have been we are a passionate wonderful people that is capable of so much until we don't have a common enemy and then we just turn all that energy inwards and watch the fireworks but we do have a common enemy maybe there's no face to that common enemy but it's the power the group of people the people that are under that dark spell and maybe even 
Satan, if that's where your belief lies, that is doing this to us. Some will say the Jews, some will say the Jesuits, some will say the Masons, some will say, I don't know, fill in the blank. But it's people that are, this is new age, but understand what I'm saying, existing in a low vibration. And for those of us who have awakened to this amazing truth, why should we exist in low vibration? It makes us no better than them. And many people about this MGTV video and the mirrors of it have acted like what we call ballers, glow believers, refusing to look at any evidence, refusing to listen about the templates and the apps and that Mark didn't really know. Any evidence thrown their way, they say, no, 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 they're shills. Patricia and Mark are shills. I knew it from the start. They're shills. They're not real people. And Patricia... <laughs> She doesn't even know her own birthday or when her own mom died. Well, that comes from a video that came out in October of 2015 from a channel that popped up out of the blue with, again, no face attached to it, no voice attached to it, and uh, no person's name attached to it. Now, some people do know who that person is, just like some people do know who MGTV is, but I certainly don't. The name of that channel who did two videos, it's a channel fully dedicated to me, I should be flattered. It's called Flat Earth Truth. And Flat Earth Truth in 2015, unbeknownst to me, was among my friends in Facebook, which now at that time was friends only, but now I've made it public. So anybody can go look. You can just go look up Patricia Steer and scan all the way through my Facebook at every single album if you want. I've been on Facebook since I believe 2009. I was late to the game. My brother was already in Facebook at that time and made fun of me for being so slow, but maybe that's because, you know, now I'm 54 years old, I'm not one of the young kids in getting involved in social media. But now, of course, social media is part of my life because of YouTube and my channel and all the connections we've all made. But I want to do a little screen share here because part of the uh, MGTV video and the one that Odd went through was about me, me not being a real person, me being an agent, me not knowing the birth date that I have, and uh, my mother's death, not knowing my own mother's death and how important that is. And that all was taken directly from the videos done by Flat Earth Truth. I find that quite interesting. And so I looked again at those Flat Earth True videos, Truth videos on that channel from October 2015, and I noticed the editing style of those videos is quite similar to the MGTV video and the spooky music. Now, spooky music does have an impact on our psyche. We all know it. There's actually certain notes, I don't know what they are, that can cause dread, fear, joy. And they played the kind of music in the MGTV video and in the Flat Earth Truth video, at least one of the two, that was frightening gave you a sense of doom and it was a call to action kind of music these people are bad get rid of them and that kind of music using things like that is disingenuous actually anyway i'm going to do my screen share here so poor at doing these things mark are you able to see that clearly enough yes i am looks like somebody is making a comment on a post which i don't want to have there because it's blocking what i want of course Things will pop up on my Facebook as we're talking, but I won't be able to stop that because it's live active social media. Um, let me go here and minimize. Sorry, I'm talking to myself. It's what I do, I guess, when I'm trying to figure things out. Usually I do it silently, don't worry. Uh, this is me, <laughs> you know that. This is my Facebook. This is the room I'm in. Everybody recognizes all of these things. Um, if you look at my Facebook, because remember people are saying I'm an agent, I'm not real. So let's go through some of this stuff. Now I have less friends than normal because some people have unfriended me. Usually it's at about 5,000, which is the max you can have. Some people have unfriended. People will be back. That's the way these things go. I've had some unsubs from my channel, but these people don't know the truth. And I forgive them because we've all been fooled by the big heliocentric deception. So I'm no different than them. I make dumb decisions and rushes to judgment all the time like all of us have. But let me go through this. On my Facebook, which has been here since I started in Flat Earth and will continue to be here, are these things. What I currently do. I'm a talk show host at Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. 
I formerly owned a store called A Girl is a Gun in New Orleans, Louisiana. I used to work at, let me clear that. I used to work at a WRNO FM, uh, that's in Sacramento. I used to be a DJ at KYMX in Sacramento. I was a program director and show host at KVO and AM and KVY and FM. And uh, I was at KPIX CBS. I was a disc jockey there at the very short lived radio station. I didn't work for a, a TV station. I was a disc jockey at KMIX and KCEY, and that was in Turlock, California. And uh, I started off at WKMI. That stands for Western Kalamazoo, Michigan. That's my father's radio station. Now, if you called any of these stations now, would they have record of Patricia Steer working there? Probably not, because WKMI, my dad owned the station. He's dead, and he sold the station to somebody else. And, um, you know, the station isn't even the same station anymore, to be honest. It's, it, they have things like Rush Limbaugh running. It's not the same thing as in the 70s when there was DJs. Sorry, I'm having to clear all of this stuff, and I just lost my screen there. Stop posting stuff on my page, people. This is important. <laughs> um, these other things are, you know, whatever. These, this, state, this radio station, KPIX, went, uh, went out of business when they stopped covering the O.J. Simpson trial. That's how back, far back that dates. Uh, I started in radio in uh, 82, right out of high school, and then moved around in California, and then New Orleans, WRNO, et cetera, and then got out of radio. Uh, Hurricane Katrina changed my life, and I was in New Orleans and ended up coming to Houston and ended up back and forth because of a boyfriend and went back to New Orleans and opened up A Girl is a Gun. A Girl is a Gun is a clothing store that I owned uh, for a couple of years. And uh, then I sold it to what I thought was my best friend. And I don't mean to put down another person, but he only paid me for a short period of time and then stopped paying me. Did I sue him? No, I just let it go. I'm that kind of person. I sometimes wish I was somebody else who could fight, but I'm not that person. And you've got to be true to who you are. I let it go. And you know what ended up happening? He went out of business. So karma steps into place. Here it is where it says I'm from Spokane, Washington, and I joined November 2009. I was born in Spokane, Washington, but I was only there for my first year of life and then moved to Kalamazoo, Michigan, then Florida, then Kalamazoo, then California, then Louisiana, then California, then Louisiana, then Texas, then Louisiana. That's my life. Radio and then just, you know, different situations. So that's the story of me. Now, this could all be made up. Sure, of course it could. Anything could be made up, right? Well, let's do a little walkthrough of a couple of things. And I didn't really plan out what I'd do, but I figured I'd do a little bit. Because in the MGTV video and in the ODD video, there were allegations I'm not a real person, and I've been hearing those things since I started. I have an album. Feel free to browse through it yourself. As I said, everything is public. Ugh, please stop messaging. <laughs> um, everything's public. That's what this globe means. Unfortunately, that means public. I guess maybe putting a straight line for flat won't work. But here it is. It's an album called The Steer Family. That's my given last name, Steer. I don't have any other last name. I'm not married. We're going to look through some of the photos. And, you know, you can, I'll, they're, they're not in any order, by the way. I scanned all these late at night uh, through different time frames in my life. This is my brother, Timothy Steer. Put this up in 2000. I guess. No, I didn't. I didn't put this up in 2000. This clock means, uh, yeah, I posted it on August 28, 2013. I set it to 2000 because my family was in the Bahamas for the millennium. That's my brother back in 2000. <laughs> Comment. He looks wickedly interesting. My brother is a, showing my age here, but I'm going to call him a goth rocker. That's how he's been. Not when he was a child. He was a young preppy boy when we grew up. Kind of like I was a young preppy girl. But he has transitioned through time to be a different sort of person with full sleeve tattoos. He didn't even have them in that picture yet. Here we are, my sister and brother and I in about 1981. This is me. I tagged myself, weird. Um, the monogram says PSL, the S in the center for Steer, P for Patricia, L for Lynn, Patricia Lynn Steer, my name. There's my brother and my sister. Oh, look, no tag on my sister. Why is that? My sister's never, ever, ever had Facebook. She's holding a hamster. We've always had some hamsters. And behind us is a Christmas tree. I've told the story before about my family. My mom and dad are different religions. My dad was Presbyterian. My, not, my mom, Jewish. 
she grew up as a sort of lapsed Jew, and my dad grew up as a lapsed Presbyterian. But uh, when they got married, they decided that uh, my mother would convert to being Christian because she just thought it'd be better when they have kids if they were brought up with one religion. And we were brought up with Christianity, went to Sunday school, was baptized. All three of us were baptized. Later, when I was about nine years old, I did learn about my Jewish heritage, and I went through the Jewish bat mitzvah, I think it's called. My brother went through a bar mitzvah. But then we dropped that and went back to celebrating Christianity, uh, celebrating Christmas. So it's just those sorts of things that happen in your life. When you're a child, you have no control of where your parents are going to put you, a church or a temple. You're a kid, and that's what you do. Um, here we have a picture of my sister, Amy, who, again, does not and never has had Facebook. She's two years younger than me. This is in the 2000 Bahamas trip. This is my niece, Ashley. Ashley Nicole Anderson is her given name, but she just got married. Ashley Nicole Drent is her name, but that's when she was young. And I remember she was super into Pokemon at the time. And this is Blaine Anderson, my sister's only husband. He died of a heart attack and was unable to actually be around when Ashley got married, which is pretty sad. Up next in this expose of Patricia Steer showing that she's a real person, we have this picture that could have been taken in 1983 behind our house. This is me. You can probably tell it's me uh, by looking at the face. If you want to pretend that that's an actor or Photoshop, go ahead. That's definitely me. My mom, Judith, she died in 2014. We'll get to her later. My dad, David, who died of pancreatic cancer. And technically, it was he had pneumonia and had a blood clot while in the hospital after undergoing chemo for the very first time after vomiting. He was rushed to the hospital, and uh, and then he died in the hospital. And we were we were there. This is my sister Amy with no Facebook, and there's my brother Timothy, the young preppy boy I told you about. Look at him there. He's even wearing topsiders or docksiders. He's totally changed, and he'd be mortified if anybody. Uh, told him that he's being shown on YouTube or that he even wore those clothes at one point in life. So that's my family, my birth family. That's it. There's nobody else. And the only niece or nephew I've got is Ashley Nicole Anderson. My sister's never had any other children. She's only had one husband. My brother was married for a while to a woman named Rachel. They divorced, didn't have any children. A couple other quick pictures me with too much makeup on in probably 1982, me with a Farrah Fawcett hairdo in 79 and 80. And I'm showing you these pictures because I've been called transgender by somebody. And so you tell me when I transitioned from a boy to a woman. Was it in this picture? Do I look like a guy here? Was it, was it maybe in that? What, what about there? What about there? Well, I say that's ridiculous, but I let you be the judge. Let me get back to the beginning where the whole bunch of photos are. Um, here's me in high school, 1979. It's me right here wearing the black dress, the red sash. That was our school colors. My date, my good friend, and her date. Both of these guys don't look like that anymore. But she and I kind of do look like similar. <laughs> so we survived aging a little bit better than the guys. Uh, even then, they drank a lot of beer. But that's high school. That's me in high school. It was prom. Homecoming court, actually. We were both on homecoming court. Here's the homecoming court. There's the queen. I was too young to be a queen. Maybe I never would have been anyway, but I was, you know, not a senior. So there's a homecoming court. I was about 16, maybe 17. That's in Florida. I lived in Florida for a while. Parents divorced, then remarried. Picture of me on the school float. Now, was I transgender yet? There's me right there. That's the same girl as before. She had two dresses. Liz was her name. Uh, another picture of me here. Are you bored yet? That's me right here. Uh, we were a uh, yearbook. This is a yearbook club, yearbook staff. Wow. <laughs> I sure had the Farrah Fawcett hair. If you don't know who Farrah Fawcett was, sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Look it up. <laughs> um, a couple other pictures. These are scanned from my school yearbook. Just the class, look how, look how awesomely 80s that is, 7980. This is me right here, walking down the steps. Obviously, I'm a girl there, female in every way. Here's me too. I don't know if you're able to tell, but that's me. Girl Scouts, I'm a junior. Look at those long skinny legs. Another picture, me, my brother Timothy, 
with some broken beads on. And my sister, why are we dressed like this? We were in Florida and the Seminoles are the Indian tribe there. And we had gone to the Indian reservation and we got inspired and decided to play Indians. I know that's not PC, but sorry, that's what happened to us in 1975, Hollywood, Florida. Here's me right here. This is uh, at a wedding, my brother Timothy, my sister Amy with no Facebook and me, my mother, my father, and my grandfather, my dad's dad way back there. You'll see him in a minute. Um, gosh, I wish people would stop messaging me. <laughs> No, I don't. I'm glad people message me. Here we are in the family pool. A neighbor, his son, me, and my dad. Looks like he's got some love handles. Should have laid pool? off a lot of. Th yeah, we had a pool. We we lived on a lake. Oh, Gull Lake. Are you jealous? <laughs> no, I grew up on a beach. Oh, yeah. okay. More pics. Family. My dad. Farmer's tan. <laughs> Ridiculous. Neighbor. Brother. Sister. Oops. Excuse me. Me and my sister Amy. Uh, other pictures you can see, you know, I'm not going to go. I'll, I'll do a few more. I love looking at these pictures. Maybe you do. Maybe you don't. Brother Timothy, sister Amy, me. We were in New York. We went to go see the Statue of Liberty and we we're on the ferry when that picture was snapped and we all were dressed in a coordinated 70s clothes. It's so me on Santa's lap. Uh, I'm a natural redhead. Today I use henna, but I am a natural redhead. We're going to see that in a minute. My mother and I on the beach in San Diego kind of where Joe Real lives, but this was back in 1966 with these cabanas. And look at the beach. Probably was a whole lot cleaner then than it is now. Me in a snowsuit in 67. Bunch of other photos. My mom looking pretty glamorous, actually. And me. Look at the beach. I bet that's all built up now. It's Hallandale, Florida. We didn't live there then. We were only visiting on a vacation. Other photos uh, will come up, but I want to show you this one. It's caused controversy. It's my father, David Steer, and me. Blue velvet. Pretty. My mom had good taste in kids' clothes. Now, this picture has created a lot of controversy because when I put all these photos and scanned them, as you can tell, that's from a small Polaroid. Scanned them on my computer and put them into Facebook. I was typing the descriptions for all of these things, and in some of them, I made mistakes or went back later and corrected it. Was this 63? Was I one? Was I two? And at one point I accidentally made a typo and put 62 here. Now it would be physically impossible due to the fact that I wasn't born yet. Now, have you ever made a typo before? Ever? No? Well, then you would be lying. Everyone's made typos. And since I made a typo just now. Exactly. And since this isn't for court, it's just my Facebook for my friends. It doesn't matter if I put December 1900. It's not a biggie. Because this isn't this Facebook wasn't made to please anybody but me and have a, a, a thing that people can see if they felt like it about, about me and maybe even just for me to have a digital way to look at photos of my friends and my family. So anyway, the fact that it said 62 for a brief moment in time and then I'm like, Somebody messaged me and like, hey, and I'm like, ooh, and changed it. I never thought anything of it. It'd be like, your shoelaces are untied. Oh, thanks. Tied. Move on with life. Well, somebody in my Facebook, a friend, not really, a spy, more likely, screen capped it. Kept it. And they're associated with the channel Flat Earth Truth. They couldn't find much dirt on me, so they had to basically make it up. And they said that I didn't know my own birthday. Of course, I know my own birthday, but they said that not to say that I'm stupid, but that I'm a fake person and we caught you slipping up, Patty Steer. Ha ha ha. Well, that's the explanation for that. A few more picks and then we'll move on. It's my mom's mom, Selma Wolf. Really young there, I think, but although the clothes of the 40s make everyone look really old. There is my beautiful mother, Judith Steer. She went by Judy. Supposedly that was in 57 before I was born. You know, I had to come up with what I thought some of the dates were on some of these photos, like we all do with old photos. And then in other cases, you do know the dates because it's written on there. My mom and my dad, they were very young when they met and married. I take after my dad in many ways physically. 
and my sister and my mother are somewhat similar physically. But as I get older, I have more of my mother's face shape. It's nice to see that too, as I age, because aging ain't fun. But when you see your mom in the mirror a little bit, it can make you smile. There's my mom getting ready to go somewhere, looking really pretty. She always had a nice sense of style. I don't know where my parents were, but that's my mom and, and a car. And I asked her about this before she died, because these pictures were you know, sitting around our house. And she said it was an Austin Healey 3000. And uh, it got wrecked when someone hit my mom at a stop sign. What a shame. I'd like to have that car now. Uh, another pic of that. And you can see the 50s sort of clothes, Austin Healey. Um, my mom and dad have always liked nice things and nice cars. People say, oh, she's a rich millionaire. How I grew up is luck of the draw. I had good family background. I had a good family background and they taught me morals and values. That's all I care about. My mom and dad, right after they got married, Pauline, my dad's mom, Howard, my dad's dad. My mother never knew her own father. He died. So the woman I showed in the 40s clothes, Selma was her name. I knew her, but she didn't have a husband that I ever met. This is my grandfather, Howard Steer. He's the first one who started WKMI radio station in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Now, if you look at his face and his lips, you might see a little bit of me in there. Uh, also, he kind of looks a little creepy, but <laughs> there he is again. He was in something called Civil Air Patrol. You can see his lips there and his eyes. And there's something similar with my brother and I and my dad in this. Although, you know, to be truthful, he does look a little scary. But still, I think he's a good-looking man. But speaking of good-looking men, my father, David Steer, he was a good-looking man. Especially when very young. Little pictures of him and his mother. Picture of them in their house for the newspaper when my grandfather Howard was, you know, showing the family for... Uh, WKMI purposes. There's a picture right up here of my dad as a little boy. And weirdly enough, I happen to have that picture right here too. There he is, 1939. Looks like they put boys in dresses back then. And they're doing that today, <laughs> totally in a different way. Another picture, we're almost done. Hope you're not bored, but this is proving that I'm a real person with real family because the uh, Flat Earth Truth video and what MGTV took and what ODD put on his was saying such things as I, basically, that I'm not a real person. Timothy Steer, Amy Steer, again, remember, she doesn't have Facebook. She's not a ghost or a fake sister. She's real and the only sister I have. And that's her daughter, Ashley. Ashley Nicole Anderson, her mom, her daughter, but now is Drent because she just got married. Now, some people say, well, your brother, you, your brother and you, I don't see connections for you on Facebook. Well, my brother and I kind of broke up, and I'll explain that in a little bit. And it has everything to do with Flat Earth. This is the template or printout of what the headstone would be looking like that uh, would eventually be, you know, put carved onto the, the headstone or however they do it for my parents. These are the death dates of my parents. A lot of controversy around this date. My mother. The controversy arises from the fact that my mother lived alone in a home in Parkview Hills, Michigan, in Kalamazoo. It was a home that she shared with my father. She lived alone because, you know, she still was mobile. She was healthy, healthy enough for somebody that was elderly. My sister lived two hours away or so, around Grand Rapids or so, uh, something called Byron Center. Anyway, my brother lived in Louisiana, New Orleans. I lived in Houston, Texas at the time. And we, you know, call her all the time and we called and she didn't answer, but she could be out with her friends playing bridge. She was part of a group called the Red Hat Company, uh, excuse me, the Red Hat Group. I forgot the name of it, Red, the Red Hatters. It's uh, elderly women who wear red hats and go to restaurants and play bridge. Anyway, it, it made her happy. She also was rediscovering her Jewishness because she was all alone and felt empty inside without my father by her. She'd known my father, I think, since she was 15. And that's the that they're each other's true loves, I'm telling you. Even thinking about it makes me want to cry. <sighs> anyway, my mom, she, uh, she died. A combination of kidney failure and a heart attack in the finished basement of their home. The same room, finished basement where the jukebox was living. 
after my father took it from his WKMI radio station when he retired and sold the station and put it in the finished basement. It was a nice little decor piece and it worked. <sighs> she died and we kept ringing the phone and we didn't know. We thought she was out. And then finally, my brother and I on a, on a three-way call said to my sister, you're the one that lives there. You got to go knock on the door. You got to go see what's going on. Well, she's disappeared before and lost her cell phone and the phone was off the hook. Well, this seemed a little more serious. So my sister went there, door was locked, dead bolted from the inside. She had to go to the police. She was keeping us abreast of the news on our cell phones. And then they got the police. They had to break the frame of the door of the front of the house. They also had to try the garage. Anyway, they were greeted immediately by the smell of rotting flesh. And my sister was the only one there, middle child, and just the burden of her having to deal with that and not me being the eldest is bad. But that's how it went out, went down. So they went in the basement and they got her body and they put it in a body bag and they said they cleaned her up and brought her up. And my sister said she wanted to see my mom one more time. And that memory of the way my mother's face looked smashed and bloody and bruised from sitting on the floor of the basement with her bodily fluids, defecation, urination and blood and pus and who knows what else oozing all over the floor was probably pretty damn horrendous. So they took her to the morgue and I don't know how it all works, but they determined the cause of death was probably heart attack. They didn't know, but they gave the death date on that day and it was printed in the paper or other places. Then the coroner did an autopsy and they determined another date within the same time frame, within the same month of July, 2014. And then the coroner called my sister and I and said, she's been thinking that she might want to do a, uh, a blood test, a blood draw to tech test for toxic things like drug overdose. Maybe my mother was taking some kind of, um, I don't know, drugs and overdosed maybe on purpose or whatever. And what did we know about that? Or maybe somebody poisoned her because the family had money. So we did a third thing and that took a while for the results to get back. And when that came back, the date of July 2nd, 2014 was determined. I don't know exactly if that's the correct date, but it's within that week. And all of the death dates of my mother's were within that date. This poem that's on the gravestone, I carry your heart with me, I carry it in my heart, is from E.E. E. Cummings. And my mother loved E.E. E. Cummings. They liked Art Deco, so they, they actually pre-selected the template of this. And then we filled in the rest. We have a family plot, actually. And I'll show you that in a second. We'll get to that in a minute. Let me show you more happy things. My mother, Judith Steer, a little bit overweight, probably contributing to her heart attack. That's me with a shiny face for some reason holding some food in their home. But you can tell that's me. It's 1998. You can tell I'm a woman for those who don't think I am. And it's my father in his later years. I miss him so much. I miss them both. But in a way, I'm really glad that they didn't have to see this horrendous thing that's happened with people saying that their daughter isn't a real person and that is an agent and that they're not real people or they weren't real people. It's disgusting. It really is. There's me, obviously a female, my brother, and my niece, Ashley Nicole, in her tomboy days. She's no tomboy anymore. This is my brother. He had a Halloween wedding when he married Rachel and he dressed up as Nosferatu. Please, no judgment. He lives in New Orleans. His life is his life. We're quite different, although I love him. My mom, she dressed up as a mummy. Good sport, right? My dad dressed up as Beetlejuice. I don't think I have a picture of that that I've found yet, but it was awesome. He even glued moss to his face. This necklace my mother made, and she used Scrabble tiles, and it says Timothy's mummy on it. You can see the full sleeve tattoos. Inside, this guy's a sweet guy. He's not some kind of Satanist, as some people have tried to say. He likes metal music and he does the devil's, uh, what do you call that symbol with his hands at rock concerts and dresses up in as like something crazy sometimes uh, in, for, for Mardi Gras and Halloween, but that's just who he is. Other things here, just, you know, different pictures of my mother and father on a cruise. They went to Alaska. They went everywhere. Lucky. A couple more photos. Brother, Christmas tree. That's a bit, really bad outfit. 
brother, Christmas tree. That's before, obviously, he went. He was, I guess, he what was he there? Dork? I think he was in the dork phase. My brother, dad with a beard, and myself in the middle. I'm still not a boy, by the way, folks. Uh, Detroit Tigers, of course, makes sense. They love sports. My dad and my brother went to a lot of Detroit Tigers game, Kalamazoo. More pictures of my parents. I think by now you know that they were real people that loved each other and loved their children. Good people. I've already shown you my grandfather, my dad's dad. That is a cool picture, you got to admit. We don't have time to really read this, but this is a love letter my mother wrote to my dad. And I've actually read the whole thing, made me cry. It's before they got married. Just really cool photos of my mother and father and their life together before they got married. And there's their marriage. This is at my grandmother's lake house, my baby sister, Amy, my mom, and me looking really worried for some reason. I probably didn't like that robe. Uh, I'm skipping pictures, and if somebody's going to later say, she skipped it, I'm sorry, I'm not going through each one of these photos. You'd be bored to death. This is an interesting one. This is at a radio station called WKMI in Kalamazoo, Michigan. But this was in the 50s before my dad took over when my grandfather, Howard Steer, was running it. And back in those days, they dressed like this to go to work. And these are transmitters and other things that I don't quite understand because that's not what, when you're a DJ, you deal with. Other people deal with the headphones and all the rest. Hanging up the Christmas stockings, Amy A. P on this one for Patricia. And then my mom and dad's milk and cookies laid out. We all have these sorts of photos. And they're beautiful. They're wonderful. This is WKMI, 1965. My parents moved from Seattle, Washington to uh, Kalamazoo, Michigan, where my grandfather lived. And my dad took over the radio station from his father, Howard. And like I said, Western Kalamazoo, Michigan. That's what WKMI stands for. AM 1360. That was in 65. And so my dad took it over at that point. These are other photos of the family together and our, our dog, our St. Bernard dog that we had named Hugo. And here is that grave in action. Got the obituaries in there as well. Maybe I should click on one of those since people don't believe any of that's true. But this obituary, my mom wrote it before she died. My parents paid for their cremation and everything so that when they both died, we'd need do nothing because they didn't want us to be stressed out about any of it. And I'm glad because it wasn't, it wasn't fun. Just me in my house kind of showing all these pictures that I haven't loaded or some I have loaded up. It's too much to do in one day. Here's me when I was super pretty, and I didn't think I was super pretty then, but now looking back, I was. I wish I would have enjoyed it when I had it, but we all are riddled by insecurities, right? Here's my brother and I. You can tell that we're in the same picture at the same time. My brother with his tattoos and me without. We are not the same person, and he is not transgender, and neither am I. If you still believe that at this point, you need... You need to talk to yourself, see where your, where your morals and values are. This is Ashley Nicole Anderson more recently and my sister, Amy. They're at an event. This is Ashley opening up her wedding gifts with Joe. This is before their marriage. They had an engagement party. Fresh, bright and happy couple. I hope they stay together. Just a little picture of my niece on her bachelorette party, my sister Amy and myself. And oh, weird, I'm wearing the same sweater as this or that's tied around my neck. Uh-oh, I've worn the same thing twice. Alert the media. You know, us getting our hair done for the, the, uh, the wedding. And this is uh, myself and my niece, Ashley. She's wearing quite high shoes and mine are somewhat low. Um, and we are here at uh, a party before the wedding. The wedding was the next day and this just happened, oops. Whew, I thought I lost the whole hangout. In uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan, my, my niece and my uh, now, uh, 
what do you call it? The anyway, her husband Joe. They're both uh, going to Michigan State University, and uh, they are going to be lawyers. They have one more year to go, so that's them together. When they were just fiancés. Me getting my hair done, people getting their hair done, the wedding, the the dance. I mean, you got to admit, isn't that a gorgeous dress? You might be bored with this and think, what is she going on about? I'm telling you these things so you understand that these videos about me, that I'm not a real person, that I'm an agent, and I've come here to ruin flat earth and make it look stupid, aren't true at all. Or that I'm a man. Or that I'm a psychopath. Or that I'm anything but what I say I am. That's me and all the girls. Well, they were all girls. I'm the only woman. <laughs> these women are quite young in their 20s. But it was really fun being around them. Pictures, you know, the wedding photographer took tons of pictures of everybody. Me with no makeup on, my niece. We had brunch before the wedding as we all got ready. This is them walking out of the church. People are blowing soap bubbles. There's my brother right there. And his girlfriend right here. You can see the tattoos. I don't know a lot of these people because obviously they're my, my niece's friends. More photos of the beautiful bride. Remember the tomboy photo? We'll look at her now. She's still a tomboy at heart. She does all sorts of things that are very sporty and fun and cool. This is my sister again. Very close up look at her. Uh, it's Ashley's mom, Amy, two years younger than me. The one that I've heard rumors doesn't exist. There's me stepping off a party bus, kind of a limo bus that we all stepped off of as we went to where the wedding was, which is at the chapel. And there's another rumor that I can't walk, that I have really bad back problems and am crippled. Uh, as you can see, there's some walking going on. Or that I have huge man feet, as you can see, that's untrue as well. And there's my sister stepping off the same bus. So we've looked at this, but we need to look at somebody else that it's been said that I am because some of the, uh, I've had a bunch of radio names and I know they're listed somewhere out here. I won't go through it because I can't, I don't know where to find it, but it's um, different names I use to protect my safety. Probably should have used one before I got into Flat Earth instead of my real name, right? But uh, I used different names when I was a DJ. Uh, Chelsea Donovan, uh, uh, Pat Dupree, um, so many different names, and I'm sure they're they're listed here somewhere, but we won't we just assume that I've openly put on my Facebook all the different names I used when I was in radio. And uh, I have my brother linked there for a reason we'll get to in a second. There's a woman that people have found and said that she's me, or it's really my brother, transgender, or something, or I've stole her identity. Now, the Flat Earth Truth video, has this woman's face on the cover of the video. And I'm gonna find this woman here for you. There she is. As you can see, we're not friends. We have two mutual friends, which is weird. Yeah, whatever, possible, anything's possible. Um, this is Shannon O'Shea. This is not me. If you would like to think that's me, feel free to go ahead. But I'd say that you're blind. And there she is again. This is not me, nor is it my brother, transgender. Where's the tattoos? Lots of freckles. So they covered her tattoo, his tattoo, her whatever, with makeup and then painted freckles on. You're kidding me, right? She is some kind of a producer. I don't know this woman. I have no connection to this woman. But she is, what is she? I looked her up before. She's a founder at SOS Management. And of course, people say, that means synagogue of Satan. Uh, no, it's something else. It's a, it's a company. And she's involved with music and bands. And she's not me. And she's not related to me. I have nothing to do with her. I hope she's never heard about any of these crazy people saying all these things about her. I feel bad for her. You can find her and look yourself. Message her if you want to. Hassle her to see if she's really me or my brother. Or take a step back. Take a deep breath and realize you were wrong. We're all wrong sometimes. I know I've been wrong a lot. 
I owned a clothing store called A Girl is a Gun. People have found that and have made a big deal out of it. A girl is a gun. What does that mean? It means a gun. It means a, it means a penis. Penis. People are penis freaks. No. I thought it was a fun, cool name. I came up with Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes for the same reason. I'm good at coming up with names, or at least I think I am, that are catchy. It meant to me a woman's powerful. And it was a woman's clothing store, a little boutique in New Orleans on Magazine Street, as you can see. This is August 18th, 2012. Somebody wrote a little article, sorry for the Kroger advertisement, took some pictures of my store, which I took great pains to decorate nicely. And, and I loved that store. I loved creating it more than running it, which is why after a while I said, I don't really want to stand up in a store anymore because it's hurting my feet. And I love the design and decor aspect. But actually, after a while, no, I, I decided no more. Here's a picture of me, and this is an unflattering dress. It makes me look miles wide, but sorry. Standing in my store. It's another article on me, and, you know, see if we can find a date here. Uh, I can't find a date here, but you can imagine. Oh, there we go. 2012, October 22nd, 2012. Just an article on me and the store and what I have and what the stuff costs and what my inspiration was, which is pretty cool. I think this is another one here. Somebody else did one. Different pictures. I made t-shirts, or at least I had a t-shirt printer in my store who made t-shirts with my design. And this is uh, from Bonnie and Clyde, A Girl is a Gun. But she's a pretty glamorous woman, and I thought it was a really cool T-shirt. And the T-shirts were made in the store with a printing press, which I think is right here. It's one of those eight-armed printing silkscreen presses. And my friend Kelly Scardina, who's also prints T-shirts from my brother's store. The brother's store is called Culture Vulture in the French Quarter, New Orleans. Kelly printed the shirts. And that's why it was really easy for me when I decided I didn't want to stand up on the hardwood floors in the store anymore and write hang tags and and deal with customers and such he said i'll buy it from you and i said you sure and he said yeah and it turned out that he wasn't able to afford it and then like i said the store went under uh, there was some rumor i never paid my taxes for the store untrue that's just something that somebody said because people like to say stuff another little article on the store that came out in 2011 so you can see that I had a store for several years. But am I a real person? Well, I, ch I checked myself before I wrecked myself. I found myself here at 54 Patricia Lynn Steer, places I've lived. Sonoma, California, check. Kalamazoo, Michigan, check. New Orleans, Louisiana, check. Houston, Texas. These people are related to me. Amy Steer, Judith Steer, David Steer. Betty Steer, well, when my parents divorced when I was nine, he married Betty Steer. Then they divorced each other and my parents got married again. So that's how I'm related to Betty Steer. I haven't seen her since I was probably 14. So, but still it's related. And why my brother's not on here, I have no idea. But when you look at public records of yourself, you might find stuff that's not true. This public record is same thing, 54. We've added another city of Novato, California, where I did leave, live and, uh, and left, um, but we don't have Betty there. We have just these three, but no brother. So it's kind of weird. We already looked at that one. We already looked at that one. Uh, oh, we don't need that one. That's the live chat. My God, it's humming. Um, there's Shannon O'Shea. We don't need my, oh, we do need my Facebook for one more thing. We don't need this anymore. Uh oh, I just closed something I needed, but whatever. Um, there's a picture of me that I probably just closed from one of the um, pictures of me from those, you know, my store. And that picture is, a, is of me next to a picture where there's a woman with her hands to her lips in the picture. It's just a close crop shot of the uh, woman's face. It's this, you've seen it. They're from Ikea when I bought them, but they're made by Deborah as a party. They're no longer sold at Ikea, it's this print. People are saying that back in 2011 or 2012, when the picture was taken for the newspaper of me in a black dress holding a store shopping bag for a girl as a gun with my hand, uh, with my hands to my side. And this behind me was a sign of my Masonic allegiance. No, it was just a picture that I thought was cool and was pretty and girly and fashiony and kind of pop culture. It's before I really was involved in any conspiracy, the sign. I didn't know. Okay. 
but people take that thing now and make memes out of it, put glasses on my face. And, you know, Mark and I joke around about us, us being agents because people have accused me of it. And I, I'm, I'm over talking about me being agents. It's not funny anymore, but we didn't cause it. It started on my very first show because people couldn't believe a woman in her fifties is going to be involved with this conspiracy. But now guess what? Even more women are on board. Why? Because it's, this is the truth. The thing we're on, people, this flat earth is truth. But the lies that we ourselves are swallowing about our fellow teammates, that's what's destroying us. We're eating, we're eating each other up. We're killing each other from the inside out. One more thing I want to show you before we're done with tour of my life 2017. This is my brother. You can see ad friend. What happened here? Oh, by the way, I do have a stepbrother, but I haven't seen him for many years. It's Kurt Steer. That was BJ's, I just mentioned earlier, BJ's son from a previous relationship when BJ and my father married when my parents were divorced. Yeah, her name was BJ, Betty Jo. Sorry. It's an unfortunate name for her, but that's the fact. So my brother went and visited him. First time they'd seen each other since 1982. So you can kind of tell that Kurt isn't a blood relation to myself or my brother. But I think it's pretty cool that my brother went and hung out with him because they were little boys together for maybe three, four years. It's kind of cool. And Kurt's my Facebook friend too. Occasionally we say hi to each other. But there's my brother. He's not my friend because of Flat Earth. Yeah. Because... I told him about Flat Earth. He was fine with it. I sent him some videos. I thought he'd looked at them, but he came back with, are you a crazy Christian now? <sighs> I don't even need to explain, but you guys know, because you've got family members yourself that have said similar things to you. This is my brother and his girlfriend, Ashley. Beat CMU is Central Michigan University. My brother still is involved because he went to Western Michigan University and got a, uh, a business degree in communications, which he's never really used. Um, he, he loves uh, the uh, uh, Western Kalamazoo, Michigan. Um, what are they called? Oh, their name is, I haven't stumbled yet, but I forgot the sports team that he likes. Uh, the Broncos, Western Michigan University Broncos. Why is there a pizza here? Is this all about Pizzagate? Is this all pe one eye symbolism, Pizzagate? Oh my God, look people. This was a photo booth that was rented out by my niece, Ashley Nicole Anderson for her wedding. So that during the wedding, all the people who were wedding participants could go in this room with this gold backdrop and pick up some of the props like he did and have a photo taken that was funny to have as a souvenir of the wedding. And so this is a, a cake pop, which I think is CGI inserted later. And then this pizza. Now, my brother is saying, am I on acid? No, that's not vegan pepperoni. He's just joking. That doesn't mean he does acid. And he's not even vegan. He's vegetarian. This is not a satanic, satanic symbol. It's a Hello Kitty. They're, they're, they're goth rock people. I think you've got that about them by now. But they're still nice people. They're not involved in worshiping Satan. And if you'd like to believe they are, hey, have at it. Does my brother do things that maybe some of us would be against? Like, dress up like this for Halloween? Yeah, but he lives in New Orleans. There's a huge culture of people dressing up. There he is dressed as a, a hair metal masquerade in 2011. Uh, it, it's just what a lot of people do in New Orleans. So it's, you know, he's also doing things like this, like going to the racetrack in New Orleans with his girlfriend, you know, wearing a big hat. Um, it's just a lifestyle. It may not be yours, but don't judge it as being satanic. There's a lot of judgment going on with everyone. And I encourage people to stop. Take a moment and stop. Think about if it was your sister or your brother or your mother, your mother's dead corpse, the people we're talking about, and how sick that is. I'm okay with talking about it. I've talked about it tons of times. But I don't think it's necessary. I don't need to prove to you that I'm a woman because those who are really here for the truth will know I'm a woman. I've also heard that I have a wearing a wig and that I'm a male and that I'm experiencing hair loss and balding and this isn't real hair. What do you think, folks? If this was a wig or hair extensions, then it's the best damn job ever. 
what do I need to do? Take my clothes off? And then you know what you'd say? CGI, still a tranny. I encourage all of us to go deep inside our hearts and realize we're all here on the same plane. You don't have to like me. Go ahead and hate me. Thumbs this video down with your 100 sock accounts or your one account because you hate me. I'm okay with that. You have a right to have any feel you, you want about anybody. But to judge me as you have judged me and to judge Mark as you've judged him with a rush to judgment when we're only here doing what we do the best way we know how. I don't do experiments. I said that from the start. You do, maybe. Good. You talk about the fact that Native people are being trampled on, and I don't. Good. We need people to do that. We need people to do debates. We need people to, to, to do everything. Let's all do what we do best and, 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 and win. What does win mean? I don't know. But right now, we're tearing each other apart and we're losing. We've got the conference coming up. And then we've got the convention in the UK and we've got something else coming up in Europe and all sorts of meetups. It's magical fun, people. This is awesome. Yeah, it's horrible and sick that we're being lied to and we're trapped by these governments that we have to live under. But while we're here, while we're here, let's try to do some good. So I'm gonna go into the live chat and see if there's anybody who has any questions because I think I'm spent. Mark, if you're still there, <laughs> you have anything to add to any of this? I'm going to look in the live chat. Uh, no, no, nope. You pretty much said it all. And I don't know how much you want to entertain live chat after something like that. Is live chat going nuts? Uh, no, no, it's gone through phases, but the moderators have done a commendable job. Thank you, moderators. But Thank you, moderators. And thank you to all those who are acting rationally. Like I said, you don't have to like us. You don't have to watch us. But allow us to be. Because sadly, we're going to be no matter what you do. Because we're here for the truth. We're doing maybe a different approach than you're doing. But we're here for the same reason you are. And on that note, I'm going to close this show. Episode 197B of Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. The beginning episode 197A was sniped. First time ever. And uh, I appreciate everyone who's been here. Hate me or like me. Doesn't matter. I care for everybody here. That's why I don't fight back. That's why I don't attack back. That's why I don't make hit pieces. That's why I don't, why I don't like hit pieces. I understand when people are fed up with somebody and they have to come and speak out. But I'm telling you, you're feeding the trolls. And I know I've done some of that today. I won't be doing it again. You don't believe I'm real after this. <sighs> Still okay. Keep it flat. <laughs>